What's going on everybody, C4 here, and welcome to the newest episode of the NCAA 14 Rebuild. And as voted on by you guys, we are going to be taking over the Texas Longhorns, a program that is one of the more famous programs in college, but hasn't really found any success as of late. I left it here because we are now in the Tom Herman era, but coincidentally, with the NCAA 14 gamebook, back in 08 and 09 was the last time really Texas was relevant when they had Colt McCoy at quarterback. When they went 12-1, and they went 13-1. and Um... I mean, they had the Vince Young era before that, but I mean, really outside of that, since I've been a football fan, Texas has been kind of mediocre, when in all realities, they should be a dominant powerhouse. So our job is going to be make them a powerhouse once again, be it Sam Ellinger, quarterback, be it building up somewhere else. We're going to find an answer to make Texas good within the next five seasons. Let's get into it. All right, so as we look at our depth chart, we're, we're looking pretty decent at the quarterback spot. Ellinger is a freshman, a true freshman, and he's already up. He's starting with an 85. Obviously, this takes last season into account. He's really promising as, as a freshman. Taking over for St. Bouchelle, who is a sophomore. I kind of wish trading was allowed, because I guarantee a bunch of schools would flip uh, a bunch of other different players to get Shane Bouchelle on the roster. But, you know, it is the uh, surplus requirement. Uh, the running back spot, we have Chris Warren, monster at 6'2", 250. Uh, we have a couple sophomores there as well. So we, we're pretty much set the running back spot. Uh, wide receiver, we have a couple decent players. Best player is probably Colin Johnson, who's expected to be a high pick in the 2019 NFL draft class. Um, but 385s, with two of them being sophomores. Always a great, great spot to be. Uh, pretty weak at tight end right now, however. Uh, offensive line, we have Carter Williams, who's selected in the second round from the Dallas Cowboys. He's a 98. Uh, we have an 87 left Garrett, 88 center Zach Shackelford, one of the best centers in college, uh, 84 and 81. So the right side is not as strong as the left, but still decent. Uh, the defensive side, we have Chris Nelson, 83. We have Roach, 84. And he is actually a sophomore, which is nice. True sophomore. Puna Ford's a 90, really good D tackle. Uh, outside linebacker, we have Hager here, Johnson, Malik Jefferson, who was, a, I believe, a third round pick for the Cincinnati Bengals, but. You know, had first round talents, first round hype for a lot of the college season. He's a 91. Uh, we have Chris Boyd, 87. Holton Hill, who didn't have the off-field issues, could have been, you know, a second round draft pick in last year's draft class. I think he actually went undrafted to the Vikings. Uh, but look at that. Those, both those guys are juniors. We should be able to get two years out of them. Uh, we have Jones here at safety. We have Deshaun Elliott, eight, nah, 92 overall. Had six interceptions last year in college football. Uh, so hopefully you can replicate that form here. I think he went in like the late rounds to the Titans, I want to guess. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh, if he does not declare, I'll be you know, still very ecstatic. He's a kicker, and we have the greatest punter that anyone's ever seen here in Michael Dixon. So our roster looks pretty nice. Let's get into the year one. At the end of the season, we are sitting with a 7-5 and five record. Not going to be involved anywhere in the Big 12, unfortunately. Uh, looking at how we did statistically, anyways. Uh, Sam Ellinger, as a true freshman starting out, was not the hottest. We had actually Bouchelle came in a little bit. Uh, Ellinger, 1,500 yards, 17 TDs, 3 picks. We had 7 TDs, 3 picks for Bouchelle. Um, but I mean, hey, promising. It's promising. 17 and, five, 17 and 3, sorry, for a true freshman uh, who's injured, unfortunately. Uh, I'll still take that, get him back healthy sooner than later. We had 1,200 yards rushing and 9 touchdowns here from Chris Warren. Ellinger had almost 500 yards and 4 TDs. So Ellinger's the future. That, that, we're in good hands there. Uh, as far as receiving is concerned, Warren actually led the team, but we, you could tell we weren't very prolific. Colin Johnson had the most, actually looks pretty similar to what his stat line was in real life with 400 yards and eight touchdowns. Um, on the defensive side, we got 62 tackles from Hager. We got five sacks from DeAndre Christmas, the best name ever. Three sacks from Puna Ford, 11 tackles for loss, three sacks from Chris Nelson. We had six picks from Chris Boyd, two from Deshaun Elliott, a uh, single there from Leek Jefferson, who actually was hurt as well. So our team was ravaged by injuries, and we still were able to finish with a 7-5 and five record. I think that's pretty all right. Let's see who's hurt right now. We have Ellinger, who's our starting quarterback, Malik Jefferson, and uh, our starting wide receiver, our senior wide receiver. So that kind of sucks, but we definitely will be able to at least play in a bowl game and get some momentum from Season 1. And we have the Heisman, Royce Freeman, who is now a member of the Denver Broncos in real life, has won the Heisman Trophy after putting up 23 touchdowns, 1,500 yards from scrimmage, which is not that crazy. Uh, Will Greer from West Virginia came in at number two. Not familiar with the Rutgers running back. Sam Darnold came in at four. 
and Mike Weber. Shout out to Mike Weber, who liked one of my realistic rebuilds this year that featured him coming in at number five. So we are playing in a bowl game. We're playing in the Meineke Car Care Bowl against Michigan. So two massive programs that have kind of been underachieving as of late. Michigan could be the next rebuild team. That's a, that's a smart team, smart angle. But ultimately, we want to take it to Harbaugh's boys, and hopefully our team's healthy enough that we can bring the pain. And it certainly wasn't pretty, but we were able to steal the victory 16 to 13 over Michigan. Uh, as you can see here, we had a pick six. We had uh, field goals, and Ellinger came in and get a touchdown in the fourth quarter. So uh, I'll absolutely take that. Player of the game, Evans. Chris Evans, the running back for Michigan. I'm actually kind of familiar with the Michigan. I kind of hope you guys vote for Michigan because I just watched the All or Nothing on Michigan. So I'm kind of familiar with a lot of their players. Uh, but anyways, and player for us was Deshaun Elliott, who had four tackles, a tackle for loss. So nine total tackles, I guess you could say, uh, on the game. So we got a bowl win. We got some wheels underneath us now before we were just pretty much riding on rims. So now, hopefully, we can retain some good players. I'll show you guys our draft class. I say draft class as in our recruiting class, which Texas had a outstanding. Texas, no matter how bad they do, they can always find a way to get a lot of five- and four-star recruits. Some of the actual players that committed to them are pretty beastly, so we'll show you those guys as well. All right, so looking at our players leaving, uh, I'm not going to, any player that actually leaves, I'm not going to, like, actually left the declared. I'm not going to bring back some Leak Jefferson, even though we could bring him back. Same with Dixon and Hill. All those guys actually went to the NFL. But Chris Boyd, on the other hand, is staying at school, so we're going to tell him his regret not getting his degree. He's going to stay. Uh, Shane Bouchelle is transferring, which kind of sucks. Because we had injuries at quarterback, and if we didn't have him, who knows? Still, it was always nice having that kind of luxury. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna suck. We're losing Puna Ford is a 92. But in reality, our senior class is not particularly strong, so our team will be competitive next season as long as we can stay healthy. So as we get ready for your number two, we ended up with a number eight in the nation for recruiting class, plus all of our upgrades to our players. So this is what we are working with. Sam Ellinger as a sophomore is up to a 90 overall, uh, but not a lot of depth behind him as Shane Bouchelle has transferred to New Mexico, which means we have no depth if he gets hurt again. Uh, running back stable stays pretty much the same. We got a very nice 78 freshman here. Not a real player, Frank Caisson from Texas. Uh, but Warren's a 93, fullback's trash. Uh, wide receivers, nothing too spectacular, but I did realize that there's a guy named Lil Jordan on the uh, Houston, on, on Texas, and that is real. That is a guy's real name. That's awesome. Um, no, our tight end still a weak spot, even with the upgrades or whatever, like the training that you get. Uh, Connor Williams decided to return to school, so he's not a perfect 99. We have Vahe, 93 left guard, 93 center, 89 right guard, 81 right tackles. So our offensive line is very strong. I mean, right tackles, a little bit weak, but... In a hole, really strong. Uh, 87 D end, 88 D end, 84 D tackle. We got a 81 overall five-star freshman. That not even, not even the best one. I have one of the best recruits I've ever seen. Uh, and Eric Coleman didn't modify him. He's pretty much the same. We also had a 77 freshman here in Tracy Smith. Uh, we're going with uh, Gary Johnson as our starter. We got real prospect, greatest name I've heard of recruit in my life, Demarvion Overshone, who is uh, actually currently classified as a safety, but in our scheme at 6'4". Uh, I want to use him kind of as a, as a speedy money backer. So he's a 77 recruit. Uh, he was originally a safety, and I moved him over to outside linebacker. Uh, 89 middle linebacker there. 84. Linebacker, of course, very really nice. Boyd's up to a 93 after convincing him to come back to school. We have Devontae Vadis, who's a 91. We got Anthony Cook, real player, one of the best corners that have uh, come out of high school last season. He is going to be a true freshman this year in real life for uh, Texas, so 878 there. We have BJ Foster, who is a top 25 recruit of the class. Class-wide is a safety, we just needed more depth here, I felt at corner, uh, and he does have good coverage ability, so he's a 76, but does give us versatility to move him back to safety uh, before too long. We have an 88 here in Jones. Uh, Deshaun Elliott coming back, he's a 97, but here is the pick. Caden Stearns, true freshman, 85 overall. He was the number two recruit in the game in real life. He's the number 19 recruit in the nation, 85 overall as a freshman. He is going to be simply absurd uh, after Elliott moves on. And if, you know, in case of injury, knock on wood, he's going to be able to take over and produce as a true freshman. So that is our team as we get ready for year number two to prove upon our 8 and 5 Meineke Car Bowl year number one. All right, so here we are at the end of the season, five and seven. Once again, very disappointing. Not going to play in the Big 12 championship. Uh, 
five and seven is, is horrific. I don't know if we had injuries to blame. I don't know what happened. But Ellinger, I assume he got, I mean, he got hurt again. 1,100 yards, 19 TDs, three picks, and then I would assume he got hurt. We got 1,400 yards, 16 TDs from Chris Warren, who's an absolute monster. We got uh, some decent receiving stats here, but nothing too crazy for our players. Uh, four TDs from Duvernay, five from Beck. Colin Johnson had a down year. On the defensive side, we got 65 tackles from Edwin Freeman. The leading sack getter was four and a half by Chris Nelson. Also had 15 tackles for loss. Five picks from Chris Boyd. That's about it. And uh, all in all, man, not just just not acceptable for this team. Uh, so let's see what we're playing in the bowl week and how far we can go with that. But uh, five and seven is gross. And the Heisman Trophy winning player was Bryce Love, who had 20 touchdowns, almost 2,000 total yards. Uh, Marshall from Georgia Tech on at two. Harris from Alabama, Damian Harris at three. Josh Rosen at four. Trace McSorley at five. And our bowl game is going to be none. Didn't even get a bowl game. My God, I hope we don't get fired. All right, so at the end of the season, we're talking about players that are leaving. We have a pretty big senior class in terms of, like, big-time players, though. Uh, much more significant losses than what we had last year. Sean Elliott, 97. Connor Williams, 99. We got a 93 in Chris Warren. He's probably been our best player on the offensive side of the ball. Best corner's gone. Like, our two best corners are gone. Uh, this Eric Coleman was going to transfer, but he's an 81 freshman. There's no chance we're losing him because he's going to get significant playing time, especially with that size. You can play D-end. Pretty much anyone on the line. So he's very, very valuable. We're able to convince him to come back. Uh, but ultimately, we're losing a lot. And we're coming off a terrible record. So uh, big chance here in year number three for something to go wrong. So to combat that massive outgoing class towards the NFL seniors, you had to come back. And we hit them with the number one recruiting class in the nation. A 5-7 and seven team that went 4-5 and five within the Big 12 is able to get the number one recruiting class in the nation. Uh, you know, we might have padded with a couple two and one stars here and there, but we have a phenomenal player that looks like a five star guy. A couple four stars, I mean, come on. This is quality and quantity. Year three is here. Year three is here. We got to do better than five and seven. So looking at our roster, uh, showing you off some of that number one recruiting class because of now where I'm recording these, when I started, the NCAA rebuilds, no one really has committed for the 2019 class. Some Now guys are starting to commit. So we have some real prospects here yet again. Uh, but Ellinger is up to a 95 overall. Uh, definitely hope that his injuries into the 90s because he's got hurt back-to-back -back seasons, which has kind of bit us in the ass a little bit. Uh, we have Kirk Johnson here, who's a 90 overall running back. Running back stable is, is loaded. Doesn't matter. Uh, wide receivers, Duvernay is a 93. Colin Johnson staying till his senior season. He's a 92. Get the longest name of all time, Hemphill Maps 88. But our wide receivers are stacked, and we're still getting recruits after recruits. Yeah, Brandon Eagles here is a really good player. And obviously the greatest name of all time, little Jordan Humphrey. Uh, got some production at tight end, offensive line. A solid across the board, Shackelford's a perfect 99. So that's a good good enough offensive line. We had a 90 D end, 91 other D end, 89 D tackle with an 86. Eric Coleman, he's a player that we convinced not to transfer, and he's going to get a lot of meaningful minutes. Uh, DeMary, DeMarvion Overshone is now our starting outside linebacker, 81. We got a 93 inside, 91 outside. Uh, Secondary is where it's looking a little weak. It's going to be led with Cuffy and Cook at the cornerback spots. Uh, free safety, we have Brandon Jones, who's a 92. And we have Stearns, a redshirt freshman. That's a 90. Absolutely absurd. So hopefully the safety is kind of like the Philadelphia Eagles. The safety play can make up for, you know, I guess it's not even a weak secondary, but... The on paper weak secondary, as in year number three, we won a bowl game at least. Come on, let's go. Let's let's get to the Big 12 champion. There we go. That is the turnaround we needed. Finishing the season number four, ranked 11 and one, and with a win here today, I would guess we could find ourselves into the national championship game. So, one straight up undefeated team. The U's not going to move anywhere. They don't have to play anyone. So. Literally, if we win against number 13, West Virginia, or we, we're playing them again. It's a rematch. No, it's, are we playing? We've got the rematch. We just beat them last week, 30-14. So if we can do the double here, there is a good chance of all matchups that Texas could take on USC in the national championship game. That's pretty nuts because that's pretty much their most famous game, clearly. 
Uh, looking at our stats on the season, we have Sam Ellinger, who, oh my god, he actually stayed healthy. He actually stayed healthy. 2,800 yards, 26 TDs, two picks. He's been incredibly efficient, does not turn the ball over. Looking at the running attempts, two, not, almost two fringe 1,000 yard rushers. Kyle Porter, 977 and 9, 943 and 9 from Kirk Johnson. We also had eight rushing touchdowns from Sam Ellinger, almost 600 yards. A little bit of a dual threat. Uh, Dubonet led the team, 55 catches, 742 yards, eight touchdowns. Colin Johnson, 670 and 5. On the defensive side, we have 56 tackles from Anthony Wheeler. We have eight and a half sacks, 18 tackles for loss from Gerald Wilborn. Uh, Wilbon, Wilbon. Uh, five sacks and 11 tackles for loss from Malcolm Roach. We have three picks from Brandon Jones, two from BJ Foster, two from Cuffy. Okay. All right. We got it, man. It's in our hands. We got the whole world in our hands. There's no conference champ. No, there's no conference championship. So I just mess. What? All right. So, fuck. We're not gonna. I don't think we can even uh, win because Miami's not playing. Like the best case scenario. Well, you know what? Best case scenario. We need Bama to lose. And USC to lose. I think if both those teams lose, it could be a Canes Longhorns finale. All right, so that's what we're going to be hoping for. All right, so your Heisman Trophy winner is Alabama quarterback Tua Tagovailoa, who 44 touchdowns is pretty goddamn mean. That makes sense. Sam Darnold, still just, still sticking around, did not want to declare. He comes up as a runner-up. Dowdle for South Carolina. Tanner Mangum from BYU. And we have Carter from North Carolina rounding out the shortlist for the Heisman. Where we are going... This is the All-State Sugar Bowl. Oh, we didn't even gain a spot, so everyone won. Uh, the 11-1, number four ranked Texas Longhorns are taking on the 9-3, 24-ranked UCF Knights and the All-State Sugar Bowl. Not where we want to be, but, you know, we will hopefully get Ellinger for another season. It's all about the QB here in the sim and uh, have another serious run next year. I really would love that matchup against the Trojans. It'd be beautiful, but, uh, you know, we'll take the Sugar Bowl for now. Oh, kiss my ass. Texas clearly not caring, clearly disappointed they get didn't get into the national championship game. Uh, falls to UCF 38 to 35, which like I said, we might have to rest in our players, something like that. Ellinger had four touchdowns on the day, but Mackenzie Milton went off. Four touchdowns. An absolute shootout here. Um that sucks. Four. Two picks from Ellinger. He, he threw the same amount. Didn't he only have two picks the entire season? He wasn't caring. You know, all right, whatever. We're done. We want. We just want next year, year four of the rebuild. I feel like, I feel like we're gonna get to the national championship. Now it's time for the players that are leaving. Uh, we have a bunch of guys, bunch of a pretty heavy senior class. Uh, Colin Johnson's a big name. Duvernay, we're pretty much losing our wide receivers, losing our 99 center. Floyd wants to go, which kind of sucks. Ellinger wants to declare. Now both these guys want to declare. I do not have a immediate replacement for both of them, but so we're just gonna hit them both with the college degree. Hey Ellinger, work on your college degree, AKA we do not have a quarterback anywhere near ready to take over, so thank you very much. It's very easy to get these guys back. It's, that's definitely an area of NCAA. We pat it back because we thought it was a perfect game. This is just way too easy. There's no real difficulty to it. There's no adjusting said difficulty. You just convince them to come back. So, uh, yeah, let's pop into the rest of the offseason. So we're here at the start of year number four, and this is probably it for us to be really competitive. However, looking at our depth charts, this is probably the best way to do it. Uh, yes, it is. It's Ellinger's a 99, which, you know, you pretty much need a 99 quarterback. But we got a true freshman, five-star Chris Daniel on the last day. Five-star was didn't really have any commitment, so he's a 79. We might not be... Terrible in case of the U5. He'll probably be 84, 85, something like that. Manageable, but with 99 Sam Ellinger, this is this is pretty much our shot. We have Toniel Carter starting running back. He's 99. Uh, 91, sorry. Uh, there's our wide receiver. Shout out to little Jordan Humphrey. Hopefully this guy has a big season. Uh, <laughs> uh, offense line, we got a 90, 91, 82, 95, and an 89. So again, we've, we've had a strong offensive line for pretty much this entire rebuild. Defensive side, it's Young, lots of youth. Andrew Fitzgerald is the big stud on defensive line, 93. Eric Coleman, a 91. Uh, Overshot's an 86. McCall's a 97. Graham is a 90. Uh, we got Anthony Cook, 89. Uh, lots of uh, depth here in the secondary. We have versatile players, guys that can play safety, guys that can play corner. BJ Foster at 93. Caden Stearns at 95. 
secondary is very good. There's no real weakness of this team. And this is it, baby. We finished number four rank last year. Had a bad bowl loss against Michigan. Now we open up number 10 in the preseason. I'm confident. Mm -mm -mm confident. Boom! Big 12 championship, baby. That's what we talk about. Big 12 championship football. That's what we talk about. National title. That's what we're talking about. Colt McCoy. Vince Young. Uh, we're number seven ranked. I kind of, I kind of didn't know my record before we did that. I kind of jumped the gun there a little bit. Uh, well, how many undefeated teams are there? We were one loss. Okay. Uh, no chance in how Clemson should be ranked over us. I'm gonna argue. Okay. Well, it sucks. That there's two undefeated teams. Chip Kelly is, you know, he's a monster with UCLA. We already saw what happened in the last episode, but this is. We're ranked below a two-loss team, and we're right there just paired with three-loss teams. Uh, no. So what we're going to hope for is that all of these teams lose games. Really, we need every one of these teams, except probably one of these undefeated ones. If Virginia Tech and one of, uh, or UCLA can win, that's going to be great. Obviously, we're going to get one loss here from Virginia Tech Clemson, which helps us out. We're going to get one loss here from Ohio State Wisconsin. Which should help. So there's seven, six, five. Um, UCLA's. Oh, there's the battle of Chip Kelly. UCLA going up against Oregon. Hopefully, Oregon plays big. Florida dominates Ole Miss. It's interesting. All right, we, we, we might have more than meets the eye with this team after the championship week. I thought there was a Big 12 championship, to be honest with you. I guess I'm just an idiot. Looking at our season stats on the year, Sam Ellinger. But there's with 3,300 yards, 32 touchdowns, the four interceptions. Run the ball, 1,000 yards, 12 TDs from Toniel Carter. 706 from Sam Ellinger, so that puts him at uh, 4,000 total yards and with a 38 touchdowns. 38 touchdowns, so he's probably going to finish on the Heisman shortlist, I would assume. Uh, receiving, we got 55 catches, 915 yards, 13 touchdowns from Reggie Hemp Hemphill Maps. Uh, more importantly, Lil Jordan Humphrey. 487 and 6. That's the greatest name I have ever heard. Um, Jeffrey McCullough the team with 75. Total tackles, 14 tackles for loss. Look at that. All that tackling. Good luck running against this team. We got four and a half sacks here from McCullough as well. All over the field. We got 13 tackles for loss from Perry. 10 from Daniels. 13 from Fitzgerald. 16 from Taquan Graham. And a couple couple doubles and a single in the interception of Private. Not that big. But let's find out where we are playing. Are we going to be in the natty? We need some some other cards to fall, or we're just going to play some stupid bowl game that probably doesn't exist anymore. All right, so for those of you really caring about the uh, Heisman Trophy, it went to Malcolm Perry of Navy, because for some reason, a Navy, Army, Air Force player wins the Heisman for some reason. Uh, not familiar with the Wisconsin running back, not familiar with the Cincinnati run back. Uh, Malik Davis from Florida there, and we have the Navy quarterback. So, Navy, everybody. Two Heisman finalists on Navy. God bless them. And we're playing in the Fiesta Bowl. How did we finish number six? That's what I want to know. How did we finish number six? We play Louisville in the Fiesta Bowl. Alright, so before we peep this bowl game against Louisville, I want to see who knocked us off. Who knocked the great Longhorns off this season? Who gave us our one loss? So we beat Notre Dame, beat Cal... Beat UTEP, beat Iowa State, beat Oklahoma, dominated Oklahoma, beat Texas Tech, dominate TCU, beat us. This game, what was this game about? What happened in this game? They put up 20 in the fourth. A defensive just explosion. Okay, well, let's simulate whatever game this is going to be, and we're pretty much we're pretty much fucked for the final year, but. Rules is rules. We're playing Louisville. And we... we oh, that's a... That's a oh, what? We lost! I'm getting too old. The small prints hurt me. That's why I can't read the terms and conditions when I... Like, you know, iTunes shit like that. 49 to 42. We got bought... Well, not body, but our defense is just shit in the bed in big time moments. Sam Ellinger. What? Three touchdowns. Ran the ball a lot. But... Ugh. Oh. I don't know, man. We got we got our backs up against the wall. We're not going to have a 99 overall quarterback. Quarterback's going to be probably sub-85. He's a sophomore. And we have to try to win the national championship next year. 
All right, let's, let's see what we can do. I'm the Rebuild King for a reason. So, yeah, we're taking a big hit here on players for losing. Uh, pretty much everyone on our team that was worth a damn is, is graduating. We call it all these 90s. Uh, Handful Maps broke the single season receiving touchdown record by one. Ellinger broke the single season passing touchdown record by one by Cole McCoy. Uh, let's see if we can get Coleman to stay. I guess pretty easy just to hit them with the hit them with the you need your degree to learn about Bitcoin. There you go. Got both of them to come back, but oof, it's gonna be a rough final. And how are we gonna do in our fifth and final year? Well, let's find out. We now don't have a 99 overall quarterback, so it's gonna be that much more difficult. Uh, Chris Daniels, still a highly regarded sophomore quarterback, 87 overall, great build, 6'4", 233, built like an Adonis god. But uh, it's gonna be rough. Uh, we have a 96-93 pairing at running back between Carter and Kaysal. We got a wide receiver, Damian Miller, the big dog, 96. We got Brennan Eagles, 89. Grigsby, 88. We've got, we have lots of depth there. Uh, Liato, tight end, 94. Reese Liato, 92 left tackle and base. Uh, 75, 89, 79, 89, 89. I actually think this guy's a real player, too, by the way. Tyler Johnson, if you're if you're currently watching this and you're in follow Texas football, you probably know who this is. He's a tackle that we have playing center for some reason. Uh, we got Drew Perry, 89. Howard, D-tackle looks good. Eric Coleman's a 96. Tracy Smith, a 90. Our Overshone, 89 at outside linebacker. Brimage, 88 inside linebacker. Graham, 94 outside linebacker. Linebacker core is nice. Secondary, pretty nice. Anthony Cook is a 94 overall. We got a 99 overall here. Free safety, B.J. Foster. We have a 99 overall. Strong safety and Stearns. Our special team unit can get the job done. But this is probably the greatest safety pairing you're ever going to see. And I fully expect us to go like 8-4. and four. All right, moment of truth. We won the Big 12 again. We won the Big 12 with a sophomore. But where did we finish overall? We started out number nine. Number eight. How are we constantly getting shafted on? One loss. And we're number eight again. What were we last year? Six? There's a two-loss team ahead of us. Like, why are we always the worst one-loss team? Are we Boise State? Is there just no respect to the Big 12? TCU's a one-loss team. I know for a fact we beat TCU. The one loss was against Kansas. So... A one-loss team in Notre Dame that plays from the Independents? Oh, Washington State. Pac-12 sucks. We're 99 everything. I reached the prestige. This was a four-star prestige school when we took over. And now it's a five-star. And you're giving us eight with no chance to grow. Bullshit, man. Looking at our final stats, Daniel as his first year starter, 2,200 yards, 21 TDs, 11 picks. So the turnovers are a little bit higher than what we saw with Sam Ellinger. Uh, 1,300 yards, 13 TDs from Toneal Carter. Very productive season out of him. Uh, we got 500 yards. We'll round up to 609 from Damian Miller, who's our big-time receiver. Uh, the defense side, we got 69 tackles from DeMarvion Overshawn. I don't know why I keep calling Overshawn Overshawn. Modal? Model? Either way, 69 tackles is a big year from him. Three and a half sacks from Tracy Smith. Three and a half from Coleman. We also got six picks from Anthony Cook. Three from Caden Stearns. As we're going to probably play in a bowl that no one cares about, but we're going to get our hands here on this Texas Longhorns team and just see how it feels. And there you go with all pretty much made-up players. Uh, Braxton Burmeister taking over for Justin Herbert there in Oregon. Got the Heisman Trophy with uh, about 30, 35-ish, 100 total yards, 41 touchdowns. On the end, there's the Air Force. Look, every year there's a random, random military school guy that shows up. Uh, we are going to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, where, once again, we are a one-loss Rob team of a better record going up against number 21-ranked Rutgers in the Fiesta Bowl. To be honest, though, the Fiesta Bowl is probably one of my favorite bowl games just because of the Boise State-Oklahoma game. But let's get into it. Let's play with it. Let's see what we can... Oh, come on. Wasn't even looking. Ghosted. Tim Barrow. Yeah, right. Oh, just broke the school record as well. Congrats. Suck it. 
All right, let's bring in live. Uh, uh, Rutgers was the number one defense in the nation. Of course, that's who I'll be playing against. So we're facing third and 20. Not getting a lot of separation. But right in the middle, Lietau. Lietau. We're going Lietau. Reese Lietau has been the mover. He's been the mover and the shaker up the middle on that cheese sling. We're going to hit him back right again for verse. We're going to play like we're a 12-year-old that knows nothing about football and just run the straight up and down route. Because it's working. And then right there, fit that in. There's your go-ahead touchdown to Damian Miller. Oh, that's just... That is just pure and utter anticipation. Why is that not a touchdown? Look at that perfect route, perfect touch. Daniel, that's a touch. Remember that song by, uh, oh, what was the name? The Foxtrot Hound, the touch. That's what Daniel got. Let's go punch this shit in. Punch this shit in. How are we not getting in? Give us the advantage. Stick your arm. How that has never been implemented in a football game. I feel like it might have been implemented one year. But the consensus is that you don't have that whole, like, while you're the ball carrier, be it receiver, quarterback, that you can't just stick the ball out and try to get the touchdown. It makes me blood red mad. So there we go. We'll get the touchdown here. And hopefully go to halftime with the lead. Oh, come on. Oh. Oh. Come on. That's brutal. Call the wide receiver screen. Doesn't even like let me see if they're like jumping or not. Uh, all right, we're in the red zone. Time to make amends. No more turnovers. Protect the football. It's good coverage. Oh my god! Fucking no confidence in this quarterback, man. Look at that. Complete that throw. Tight window. Squeeze it in there. Oh, you have. You have got to connect with that. There we go. We got a chance. We got a chance. Only down one score. Oh, hey. Turns out having to fucking play from behind because your own shitty quarterback against the number one defense in the game is not going to be a good way to end an episode. But uh, we're going down swinging. I don't care how many times we get sacked. This quarterback means nothing to me. Nice. Nice. Final play of the game for the 25. I don't think we have anyone with Freddie Mitchell's genetics. So I don't know if this is going to work out well or not, but I don't know. It was, I mean, we were doing to begin with. We never got any respect in the polls. We we went 22. Oh, right there. Can you get out of bounds? Let's go quick. Up to the line. Snap it right away. Uh, we went 22 and two in two seasons, and never finished higher than whatever it fucking was, like 10. Rigs big, and he goes backwards, but he gets it. Hey, there we go. 54 yards to end it. Three picks or three touchdowns, four picks, 400 yards against the number one damn team. Oh, it kind of sucks. But I guess after the last one, the UCLA rebuild, where, you know, we won the, we won how many, two national titles? You're not going to win national titles in all of them. And I just kind of feel like Texas, a little bit cursed. But, yeah, guys, that's going to wrap up the episode here today. As always, let me know in the comment section below what team you want to see next. So we're now we're looking for perhaps a Big Ten team. Like I said, we saw Michigan earlier on. Uh, plus, I just, I just watched the All or Nothing on Michigan, so a lot of those players would be, I could have, I could have some tidbits on them. Um, I mean, you always get independence, uh, Notre Dame. Cause we just want to try to go through, like, do a run of conferences, and then we can go back and start, like, you know, once once we're done, a couple of the more big ones, and then we look at um, we look at redoing it again, like start from the SEC and going our way down. So we still have the ACC, the Big Ten are the two are the two most popular schools. So I'd say Michigan. I've, I remember someone suggested the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, let me know. There probably will be a poll on Twitter, so follow me if you don't already. Papa C or what is it? At Papa X C4. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy another episode of the NCAA 14 rebuilds here. If it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, it's C4. Say peace out.